Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Hero Movie Podcast, your greatest source for superhero movie discussion in the multiverse. I am your host, Adam Portress, and I'm joined, as always, by Sean Keenan. Hottie's pretty sure that Finn Jones don't know a lick of karate. <laughs> I am darn straight that uh, Heidi is right. I think Heidi is the most odd point Heidi's ever been. Uh, <laughs> now, Bruce Leslie, of course, the prickly pear himself, is uh, he's, he's doing some stuff with the family. Uh, so he's on the road, cannot join us this week. But fear not, baby birds, we got you. Now, while we may not be as smart as that guy, we're going to do our best to fake our way through it and, uh, you know, maybe entertain you at the same time as well. So I think really at the end of the day, uh, we can say that Bruce really won out on this because we'll be reviewing the last half of of Iron Fist on Netflix. It's not good. I I think I've got different things to say about it. I, I got I, I Oh, what a surprise. You're going to you're going to zag while everyone is zigging. I well, don't, uh, well, hey everybody. Everybody get kids gather around. Well, I'm going to I'm going to say it's more of a zip than a zag because it's not like, like okay. I don't know that I'll be heaping the most to helping of praises on it, but I I went on a roller coaster with this show. <laughs> Uh -huh. And we'll 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 get to talking about that. But what we do like to talk about on this show is the people that take the time out of their lovely day to join us down at the iTunes and leave us a five star review, aka Humdinga. Humdinga. And uh, this one we wanted to do it last week, but my stupid thing didn't load up properly. So <laughs> my stupid thing, you your brain, my brain, <laughs> my brain, and I thought I took a screen because I I'll because I don't want to look it up in the iTunes thing because it takes too long to load. Yeah, so usually, it does take a long time. Usually, I'll just take a like a screen grab and stuff. But apparently, I thought I did, but didn't. <laughs> so I was like, well, hum, "Oh, hum, buddy, it's all right." Humming, humming, humming. So I look, you know, like fun. But hey, we're gonna do it up here at the top of the show, just as the good Lord intended. Uh, Everybody makes mistakes. It's all right, and I do more than often. Uh, this one is entitled. This is not a mistake, however. This is a. This is a. Uh, this is a humdinger. Is what this is. It's uh, five stars. It's entitled "Crazy Awesome" by Becker underscore Jeff twenty three. Very good. I enjoyed the show, Becker. Were you a fan of Becker? Uh, I never watched a single episode of it. It's not terrible. It's well. Here's is a, Ted dancing on it. Oh, of course, Ted dancing is in it. Then He's, I bet it's pretty good. It's not, it's, it's good. And like, you know how I complain about everything? I do. It's pretty much Dead Dancing plays Adam Portress in that show. Oh no. So like it's, if, if, if you had a serialized version of your life, yeah. would you choose Ted Danson to play you? Oh no, no. That's a Who good... would you choose to play Adam Portress in the Adam Portress story? Well, uh, back in the day... I, you know, back in the day, a fat Christian Finnegan looks a lot like Adam Portress. You know, that's that that's pretty good. Although, although now Christian Finnegan is very svelte. He's yeah. a svelte man. He looks his, he looks sick. His, his lady his lady put him right into shape. Yeah, his yeah. I need one of those. <laughs> Maybe that's what I'm missing to get into shape. <laughs> there are ladies around that just go, no, that's not the case. All right, this one's a title, Crazy House. <laughs> We're getting into some fun stuff. Uh, here, here, here's here's what he writes. Huh? Found this from Heroes and Villains podcast. You guys are fantastic. Still playing catch up on all your previous episodes, but each is better than the one before. So thank you guys for all you do. That is Becker underscore Jeff 23. Uh, Mr. Becker, thank you uh, for dropping down to the iTunes there. Giving us a five star review, a.k.a. Humdinger. Humdinger. And uh, if you'd like to do that too, man, that'd be really awesome. That just helps this show get out to more and more people. And, uh, you know, it, it makes the world go round. That's what I says. He does. He says it all the time. I won't. I, I can't shut him up about it. <laughs> he keeps on doing it. Keeps on saying it. It makes the world go round. Yeah, yeah. Makes okay. the world go round. Oh, jeez, just order. You know, <laughs> I have a large fry. Wait a minute. <laughs> now, Sean, we we have an we have an interesting email up as well. So okay. uh, let's do it. Let's okay. go to the mailbag. Bales here. I'll say we've gotten so much use out of that between two podcasts. I'm glad we didn't brand it with anything. Therefore, we could just recycle it for everything that we do. I love it so yeah. much. And it's I know what a smile it brings to you. So <laughs> just keep using it. It's so good. Uh, this one now we've we've had an e we've had emails back and forth with this gentleman a couple of times, uh, but most of them have not made the air. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. Um, 
but uh, this one, this one is at least a little bit better that we can have this conversation, and it's good. And I think it, I think it bears mentioning on this program. Okay. And honestly, it's good that Bruce isn't here now. While while you got a lady friend, you're not, you know, tied down in the official sense, if you will, the legal sense, if you will. So I think you and I can talk about this subject freely. All right. All right. Uh, this, this one's from Matt. Hey, guys. Love the podcast. I do apologize for some of my more drunken, abrasive reviews. <laughs> <laughs> At least he's aware of it. But I think that it's mostly due to I love Doctor Strange and you guys obviously don't, LOL. So he had a real big problem with our, us and the animated Doctor Strange thing, which I think we all turned around pretty much on live action. So, you know. No, I did, and I, I I wasn't a huge fan. Oh, then you're the jackass then. It's, yeah, then... He, he you yelled directly at me, Matt. <laughs> That's true. Well, you, sometimes he deserves it. All right, but as much as I agree with almost everything else you guys have to say, I have a friendly grievance. Uh oh. You you I think you're gonna take I think you're gonna take umbrage with this one. Eva Mendez is not hot. Um. St- all right. Okay. So he, he, no, no, he, yeah, look, look. It's why they make so many different flavors of pop tarts now. This is true. You know, I, I like I like the uh, I like the cinnamon uh, one. Yeah, those are good. Uh, she is okay. Now here's where he gets a little bit <laughs> more in depth on his distaste for Ava Mendes. Okay. <laughs> she is a horse mouth non talent and doesn't need to be in anything more than a Sears catalog underwear spread. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's, that's a pretty good slam, Matt. Uh, that's a good, good job by you. That's a good diss. I like that. <laughs> it's like if uh-huh. you're going to smash somebody, that's a good way to do it. That being pretty said, good. that being said, you guys are great, and I hope you do the Thomas Jane Punisher Kick-Ass 2 or Thor 2 in the near future. Uh, with that, the Punisher series uh, debuting in November, as well as Thor Ragnarok. Keep up the good work, fellas. Just try to develop better taste in women. Matt from Florida. <laughs> Matt, thanks for writing in, and thanks for only being partially abrasive to us this time. We appreciate that, buddy. <laughs> you know, it's not. Uh, uh, I, I take no umbrage to that at all. You know, I mean, you know, I, I, I am attracted to her. What can I tell you? He's not. That's again. Who cares? Yeah, that's true. Look, and I say this, man. If it's good enough for the guys, why, why, why can't it be good enough for everybody else? <laughs> exactly. And really, though, when you think about it, doesn't. I mean, look, I like Ryan Gosling. I think he's he's a handsome man. But doesn't that seem like way out of his area? Seems, no, that dude can pull in anything he wants. I don't know. It just seems weird to me. I don't, maybe I just see more of his Mickey Mouse Club, and I'm just like, you don't deserve that. Like, like I'm over here, some sort of prize pig in this <laughs> in this conversation. Look, man, I have heard I have heard women coo about Ryan Gosling. I mean, he, that is a that is a known thing. That's true. I'm surprised. Has he ever made People Magazine's Sexiest Man Alive? I feel like he's had to, right? He had to have at some point here. So uh, that counts for something, I guess. He also does the really smart thing where he, he, I don't know how intelligent of a human being he is, so he just keeps his mouth shut, you know, like like Brad Pitt does. You never see Brad Pitt like, oh, hey, and this and this and that and this. Like, you'll never hear him. Like, you never hear him talk. He's not one of those white screened, you know, just like, here's what you need to know about world. And it's just like, you know what? Maybe I'm just going to shut up and be a good actor. And Yeah. And, yeah. No, nobody needs to know what Ryan Gosling thinks about Trump. Yeah. It's like, who cares? It's just like, yeah. I, I just want you to be awesome in movies. Which, you, I, I, you know, I, I'm hard pressed to sit there and find a, you know, a, a bad guy's flick, man. I love the I love the good guys. I think that's a great movie. That was one of the, that was one of the better ones in the last couple of years. All right. So now I know Bruce isn't here, and that saddens us all. Believe you me, it saddens us all. But we don't we don't come here unprepared. Well, at least uh, you know the, the other two don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, we don't. I, I, shut up. Just keep the illusion alive, <laughs> don't you? I don't want to let them in on our process. <laughs> I, Adam, I love our back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> I, again, yeah. I think it's you and my just you and I just know each other for as long as we have. Just it, it, it works. <laughs> it absolutely is. It works. Uh, but Mr. Keenan has come up with a comic book connection for us this week. What do you got for us? The character Colleen Wing first appeared in the November 1974 issue of Marvel Premiere number 19, and was created by Doug M- Monk. Is that how you pronounce his name? Sure. Doug Monk and Larry Hama. She's descended from a family of samurai and is a Japanese martial artist who avenged her grandfather's death with the help of Iron Fist. 
After arriving in New York City, Wing befriended former police officer Misty Knight, with whom she started a private investigation agency. The two would later form the crime-fighting duo Daughters of the Dragon. As private investigators, Wing and Knight frequently work with Heroes for Hire. Now, Doug Monk is a name casual comic readers like myself don't hear very often, but he's the creator of characters Black Mask, Moon Knight, Deathlock, and Bane. Mm. And now there's a pretty girl who actually knows martial arts attached to the character of Colleen Wing. So it's pretty safe to say that the, his character here is going to become a lot more recognizable, especially if she shows up in a show that's well made. <laughs> Adam? I really miss Bruce. Well, don't we all, though? Don't we? It's like, and here's the thing. But I, I think this is a good thing because what it does is it also gives people uh, like I think they, they they know what he does. I think they appreciate it. I want them to course. appreciate it even more, though. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, that's how we do. Every every once in a while, I'll do a Stallone connection. They'll be like, "It was all right," but that other guy, he's a man, you know. So, of course, there's going to be an episode where I'm not there, and they're gonna, everyone's going to be like, "Thank Christ!" <laughs> that's not going to happen. You've got that voice, my friend. That's that voice. True. That's true, and 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 no life. All right, so. Now, for those of you that aren't aware, we did review the first six episodes of Iron Fist a couple episodes back. Why don't you dig on through the HMP archives and find those? You can also find it for all the other Marvel Netflix shows we have as well. So if you like one of those, is also your uh, your Jessica Jones, your Luke Cage's, your two seasons of Daredevil, go back and check those out as well, man. But on this episode, we're going to be reviewing episodes 7 through 13 of the first season of Iron Fist. There are going to be spoilers throughout this entire thing. So if you have not seen it, you don't want to be spurlt. Uh, don't listen, but you've already downloaded, so we've already got that download, so thanks. Uh, but, uh, you know, tell your friends. Anyways, <laughs> so... Yeah, so, so we, we ended up we ended up at uh, uh, episode six, and one of the things that I remember about that episode, uh, our episode, mm -hmm. is that we weren't sure if, uh, if Finn Jones was the right cast, uh, the right casting mm -hmm. for Iron Fist. And after watching these these twelve or the, the these other seven, yeah, uh, it's not it, it's not a mystery anymore. Like he was not he's not the perfect person to play that character. And I get it because he's got the Game of Thrones prestige behind him. Mm -hmm. He's just he's just poorly cast, right? But I, I, as I was thinking about, it, I was like, you know what? He's not a bad actor, and he kind of, sort of looks a little bit like that. He's he's drawn in the comic book, and there are a lot worse people you could cast as Iron Fist. And and just as I was watching the episodes, here's my list of people who I think would be worse. Okay. As as Iron <laughs> Fist, right? Here we go. Tell me if you tell me if you agree. All right. Joey Lawrence. Yeah. Not no. Mm. The actress who played Precious in the movie Precious, based on the mo novel Push by Sapphire. <laughs> um, Gabriel Sidibe, uh, they would have got a little credit for you know unwhitewashing, yeah. but yeah, that no, still no. All right, the high kicks Mar would be tough. Mario Lopez mm. from Saved by the Bell. Now he is built, but he's now while. While he hasn't aged a day, he is in his fifties, I think. So I don't know that that could have worked. But now I'm gonna say I'm gonna I'm gonna go a hard pass on that. He's too dimply. Okay. I, I agree. I agree. David Spade. Well, very similar in style. Maybe a right. little bit more uh, flat, but no, nah, you're right. Okay, Finn Jones still he, better. Still, still, he'd be, still winning. He'd be Finn. way more snarky than Finn Jones, and he does have the blonde hair. Which so, seems to be very, very important to Marvel uh, when it comes to casting Iron Fist. Yeah, so you're gonna kick me now? Oh, okay, I don't, I don't have a David Spade. I try. That's <laughs> look, look, you, you have the ironic detachment, and that's the most important part. Here's you. I want to kick and be Mr. Karate Man. This is me. Bye bye. <laughs> there you go. And then he Iron Fists him in the face. I think that would work. Well, okay, Finn Jones still wins a little bit by there. All right, all right. The guy who played the banjo on Hee Haw. Uh, uh, Roy's. I used to watch Hee-Haw as a kid all the time. Crap, it kills me that I, I can't I, remember his name. I couldn't. I couldn't remember his name. That's why I said it the way I said it. <laughs> that works. Uh, you're right. He's probably dead. I think. Okay. <laughs> I, I I only have three more. Here we go. Okay. Bruce Leslie. Hmm. 
He's see, he's a squatty shaman, so it's kind of a little bit, but mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. I have seen his high kick, not as good as Finn Jones, even though Finn <laughs> Jones is. No. You have seen his high kick oh. in what in what capacity? Listen, when you're when you're walking through the mean streets of Charlotte and uh, things go down, you got to be ready. And uh, there's no person better to have by your side than Mr. Bruce Leslie in that accord. Man, he is a knockabout guy mm-hmm. for sure. Uh, okay, here here's the last two. <laughs> the kid from those Encyclopedia Britannica commercials from the '90s. Oh, a bigger pair of Reeboks could not be found, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's just like, what are you, like a 22-year-old Andy Rooney? Get out of here. That's exactly what it felt like at the time. <laughs> and, then, and then finally, and this might be a dated reference, not that the kid from a tight clip eating Britannica commercials <laughs> in the Andy 90s Ro- is dated, <laughs> but this one's super dated. <laughs> Jim J. Bullock. Ooh. Now that's an interesting choice. Not one as that I. Iron Fist. <laughs> Not one. See, as bad as you guys think that some of this casting might have been, could have been worse. All of that. All of that is way worse casting. Could have been a lot worse. But here's here here's my kind of uh you know we'll we'll kind of get into a couple of specifics that we thought were kind of big points and stuff. But mm-hmm. overall, mm-hmm. I think my biggest thing with this was that. It honestly takes, I think, the entire series to really get through is that his character was kind of crummy on account. I guess it feels like they wrote him that way. The writing is definitely bad on this show. Um, And and it's it's the I I, I think and I really do think this. I think from the second half of Luke Cage till the end of Iron Fist here. I think that they use their their good writers for the Defenders show. Mm. At least I'm hoping that's what they did. Because for the last now, because it's what, 13 episodes of Iron Fist? Mm -hmm. There's been 19 episodes of Netflix Marvel Universe that have been okay, but not great. Yeah. And so now here we are, because the next thing up is Defenders, yes? Mm Mm-hmm. So Defenders is next. If that is a fail also, do we start thinking about this entire universe, the Netflix universe, kind of the same way we do about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Or, you know, uh, to go to a different a different universe, uh, the the um, the CW shows. Yeah, that's a good question, because I think especially with the Defenders thing, uh, it's going to be quite the balancing act, quite the juggling act to get everything together. And to get it to work right. Because one thing that they don't do, even all the way up until really the end of this one, while they always kind of plant a little seeds of a little bit of, uh, hey, here, here's like a, a slight little reference to some of the other series and stuff. These right. characters, the main ones, don't really make appearances, uh, save for like, you know, a quick Luke Cage, a quick Jessica Jones, right? In, in the other series, mind you. Uh, well, we did get the we did get the nice Jessica Jones reference in I can't remember episode eight maybe of Iron Fist. Yeah, like I said, there's a they they drop a couple of hints and stuff, but they they stay out of it for the most part. And mm-hmm. so you would have I part of me thought in my brain I was like, oh well, they'll be like maybe they'll plant like a really good seed going, hey, here's where the Defenders is going to go from here, or just kind of like like wrap us up to the point where we're just like, oh snap, I can't wait for this Defenders to drop, and they don't do it, not no. at all. I th- which I think is a huge mistake. I think when I think when by the time that you're building this universe and you've gotten to this point, I think you have to leave that breadcrumb there for everybody to go, "Ooh, this is what's next on the plate." Although I don't remember what the lead up to the, like our very last thing we saw before the first Avengers movie happened. What what was the last thing we saw? We saw what? I can't remember. It's, it's Iron Man is it Iron Man two or is it Thor that was before Avengers? Oh darn it! Um, Th- that's an unfair question because I don't, the, I don't the, know the person it. the person who would know that is not here today. Yeah, there's 15 of those movies. <laughs> 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 I'm like, I'm like, it's sometimes even I'm a little sketchy on the orders, and I'm like, well, I don't. But yeah, but I don't. I, but basically, to make my point here, I don't remember there being a massive push for like dun 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 the Avengers. Yeah. 
Yeah, but at least I'll say this: at least with those, they left with like your with your uh, post credit sequences and stuff. They usually left you with the, they led a, a trail of breadcrumbs, if you will, to the next. You thing. know what? It's Captain America: The First Avenger. You, that's that's right. the that's yeah. the last thing, and it and it is a, a nice drop because it's him punching that bag, and you see him like knock the the heavy bag mm-hmm. off of its moorings, and and uh, Nick Fury walks in and he goes. Uh, you know, hey, let's try to save the world or something like that. Yeah, like that. That's a that was a really nice drop, actually. So now that I think about so it. So now that they're 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 letting people know what's up and getting them in there and everything, but but we don't really do that with the show. And I I understand why they do it, but at the same time, I think especially by this point, you have to you have to let people in on the gag, if you will. Yeah. But but that being said. Uh, the show kind of it, it goes on like kind of a circle with me. Like the first like three or four episodes, I was like, okay, I see what they're doing. Yeah, I, I enjoy. Right around episodes five to six, and maybe really even into seven, I'm like, okay, we're we're languishing a little bit here. I think in the last like four episodes, three to four, yeah, really four episodes, it picks up quite a bit because I think the show really decides what it kind of wants to be. And I, I, I think you were touching on this last time, is that perhaps this should have been shorter. Had yes. this been like eight episodes and they took a lot of the junky junk stuff out, I think this really could have been, you know, really, really great to just get rid of all the fat because there's there's a good amount of fat in this story. But I think once they get to those last four episodes and kind of the the show itself takes almost a twist. Uh, with um, I, I'm always going to call him Foramir because that's just who he is. <laughs> when Dead Dad comes back, yeah, uh, and he really like he get he gets killed there. What like episode it was it six or seven? I forget. It's seven because he kills uh, Ward kills him in seven, and then it's I, I, the part I don't remember is whether he comes back immediately at, at the end of that episode or if it starts in episode eight. He's yeah, he starts. It starts in the episode where all of a sudden you, you have this large overhead shot there, and then the face comes out, and he kind of crawls out of the muck there and everything. Yeah, that was really cool. And that's something that I was highly unexpected for me at that point. And where that character kind of goes is what really, when we find out, essentially, he's going to be our real big bad. So we, but, but, you know, one of the things that I really liked about the Ward character, by the son, is that the son character is vastly more interesting than the father. You know, mm-hmm. having having been picked on by his dad and, you know, made him a bit of a monster. And then when he kills his dad, what happens next? So if they would, the far more interesting choice is to make Ward meet him the big bad instead of the, the father. Like, mm-hmm. it looks like the father's going to be the big bad. And then you kill him off and you make the son the actual big bad guy, especially someone who has such a history with Danny Rand in the first place. When you see him picking on him when he's a kid, right. that's a thousand times more interesting to me. True. Now, I was, so that's, that's, not a, that's not bad. I mean, I would definitely take that. But I think the way that they went... Because to me, at the same time, too, and they kind of touch on it a little bit towards the end where they're just like, oh, kind of a, 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 you know, I guess they're just grasping at straws here trying to figure out why he's acting different. But they just go, oh, it's almost like every time he comes back, like a piece of his soul is kind of gone. Because right. I, I loved when he, he came back because we don't really know what's going on. It's like, is this actually him? Is it somebody who thinks that they're him? Do they just have his memories? Does he know what's kind of going on? I thought that was really interesting. And I, I like seeing somebody try to figure out. And I love how the character has these just rapid just changes of all of a sudden. I mean, like, he goes to killing his assistant, and then, like, you know, five seconds later, it's just like, oh, no, this was, why I can't believe I did this. This was horrible. And, you know, or pouring the scotch, and he's just like, hey, we're having a good time, and then just really going off the edge real fast and, you know, smashing the uh, glasses and everything. I just, I loved how that, I wish they would have probably played a little bit more into it, of, you know, just what's going on in the head of that character. Well, you know, one of the things, and don't forget when 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 Harold Meacham kills his assistant, he kills his assistant because his assistant didn't want any ice cream. Which is if, so it, awesome. <laughs> it's so it's so over-the-top crazy and, and great. I mean, it's great. And the actor, 
I, say what you will about him. He he does crazy really great, and it's a different kind of crazy than the kind that comic book fans are used to. You know, it's not mm-hmm. like the Joker kind of crazy. It's it's something different, and you know that's part of the problem with a lot of superhero based property is that when somebody hears crazy, they immediately think, oh, I'll go, I'll go be the Joker. Yeah, you know. Like even Jim Carrey in that terrible Batman movie he's in, he has a great performance, but it's clearly based a little bit on the Joker character. Right. And and it's, and specifically Tommy Lee Jones is clearly stealing from Jack Nicholson in in Batman. The, and so I do like his I do like his performance in this, but to reiterate, I think it, that I think that making Ward the big bad guy would have been incredibly fun. And and also the thing that we talk about a lot on the show is that it would be a little bit of the Xavier and Magneto uh, dynamic, you know, where mm-hmm. like he's not all bad, but but he's a bad guy. You know what I mean? And that just makes for for shades of gray and which makes for far more interesting characters instead of just this, you know, like bile spitting insane guy. And here is one of my problems with what they've done in this show, Adam, is that because now that they've set it up that the the hand can can bring people back to life Mm -hmm. that I, I believe that's all set up for Electra so that when Electra comes back, she's going to be a little bit crazy because she's been brought back the same way that Harold was brought back. Hmm. And to me, that is so offensive, but it, it is exactly what they did. That's exactly why you why, why Ward kills Harold in the first place is so that later, and I think it's for Defenders, probably, uh, yeah, Electra's in Defenders, that you're going to see almost the same thing happen with her. Hmm. That's not bad. Yeah, you, you're right. It, it is interesting. I think... The more I think about it, I think you're right. The ward would have been more like more of an interesting thing because you're right. He has that kind of good to where there is a lot of things that he does that you're just like, oh, well, that's straight bad. And like there's other things that he does where it's like, I, I see where he's going with this. He seems to be playing, you know, chess and not checkers. Right. Exactly. And and he was smart about it, too. And he was completely getting wailed on by his dad, which makes him bad in the first place. And he loves his sister and he loves his family and he loves his family's company. Like you, like that all makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. What doesn't make sense is when, when the dad who just got killed pops up in the swamp and, and it is all crazy and then kills his assistant because he, he refused some ice cream, which don't get me wrong. That's all great. And that's fun. And that's something that this show was sorely lacking. But it's just a more interesting. It, it's it's more interesting if you have Danny be uh, like Jason Bourne. It's more interesting if Ward is the bad guy. Yeah. Now what what? Uh, so this this kid got killed over vanilla ice cream. What what ice cream flavor would you get killed over? Would I get killed <laughs> over? Yeah. Oh please, cracker! It's pistachio. Pistachio is very underrated. Very underrated pistachio. Not in this house, fella. <laughs> I think if you go to your normal folks, they're just like eh, the the green nuts and st- I don't really. You're wrong, people. That's good stuff. It is. It's also the best pudding flavor, hands down. Mm. You know what I found that's a horrible pudding flavor recently? This mm. is this is fun for the audience. Um, cheesecake, cheesecake, really? Pu- cheesecake pudding tastes like protein powder. Oh, that is not good. It's not, you know, protein powder doesn't taste great to begin with, and this just tastes mm-hmm. like vanilla protein powder. I'm like, this is garbage. Who would who would buy this? Who made the mistake of purchasing this garbage? Wasn't me. I, I I'm surprised. Did you buy it for yourself? The no, pudding? Were no, you like, no. I, I, you was, know what? I feel like pudding. It's one of those that's like, oh, well, what's in the back of the cupboard here? Hey, look at this. When was gotcha. when was this bought? Oh, it just takes two cups of milk. All right, we'll we'll have some pudding, and then it's like, oh, this was a mistake. <laughs> I, I hear you, fella. I've been there before. That's how I found out that refried beans in the can with uh, with chicken mixed together. Mm-hmm. Pretty great. Yeah. Pretty great. That's that's a good old US of A right there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, so let me. I actually wrote a couple of notes for this. I know that's going to shock you. It I, is shocking. But I knew Bruce wasn't going to be here, so I knew I had to. I knew I had to step <laughs> up my game. <laughs> to be quite frank. Uh, one of the notes that I wrote down uh, because somebody at some point asked Danny. Uh, Hey, why don't you just turn on your hand light there? 
<laughs> Which reminded me, why did why did Neil Diamond do a song for this series? Is beyond me, man. You know, turn on your hand light. You remember that song uh, for me? I'm BT? going to see him next. I'm going to see him next month. Honestly, like my parents saw Neil Diamond back in the day, they said it's one of the best things they've ever seen. They just go, the man is just amazing in concert. I yeah, he's mind a it. real performer. Yeah. Wouldn't mind seeing, and they said they saw they saw him in the round and everything too, which was like you know what pretty cool. The round, the round, baby. That's pretty good. Uh, one thing, so let's let's talk about some of the things that like I, I was trying to give as much leeway with this as possible. The first six episodes, thinking maybe mm-hmm. they saved a lot of it towards the end, and there's a bit of it kind of there's sporadic good, sporadic bad, but it's mostly bad. Let's talk about the fighting in this thing. Oh, it's so bad, and and it's specifically because I wrote I, I wrote notes as well. Mm. But you know what? I almost always write notes. Shut up. <laughs> so episode eight, they go to China. Mm-hmm. They find they find Gao's really really shoddily defended stronghold. <laughs> it is like there's like two dudes. There's two guys, and one of them is the drunk guy. Which that that was great. The drunk guy is great. Although the <clears throat> you have to make that guy really interesting because Danny is just not. Here's the problem that I have with that. I'll stop you there. That I found terrible. Why? Um, because look, here's the thing. If you're gonna do, if you're gonna do the drunken fight stuff, you got to bring it. Because here's yeah. the thing, man. It has been done, and it has been done amazingly well. Sure. To, and for you to not at least perform at a seven, it it was it just it made me so sad. It made me sad because it just. It, it was choreographed bad. The guy doing the fighting was fair at best. But, you know, when you've got... And by the way, people, for any of you that think Legend of the Drunken Master is is like the one, you're wrong. It's just regular Drunken Master. It's the Yin Wu Peng, people. Come on, let's get ourselves straight here. Let's not pretend that the sequel is better than the original because you're wrong. Is uh, that the one... Is the sequel the one where he ends up uh, uh, mentally disabled by the end? I forget. It's been. A, I think there's a train I in it. I think it is. It's not good. It's not good. But the the one where you know, I mean, the original one is is, is the best one. But uh, you know, when, but it's it was so it was weak sauce to me. It just I I felt like I was like, oh snap, we're gonna get a drunken fight here. He didn't even really have much of a drunken style at all. It's like if you're gonna lean on that kind of you know martial arts trope and everything, lean on it, son. Lean but on look it. Look who he's fighting with. That's His true. fighting partner, it, 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 he literally looks like he's in Do- Dolomite, like the fight scenes from Dolomite. Yeah. Because he, he, Finn Jones doesn't know anything about martial arts, like clearly, clearly doesn't know anything about them. So, of course, the choreography with the with the crazy drunken master guy, that guy is not going to be as great because your, your dancing is only going to be limited to your partner. This is very true. And... It's so bad, and then and then you have the flip of that, where uh, Colleen Wing is fighting her lady, and that fight is awesome. So not only do you see a really good fight, but they keep cutting back to Finn Jones, uh, you know, as Iron Fist, and it just looks awful. Yeah. Now, fun Dolomite fact: uh, the fighting choreography with it was done by the Chuck Norris School of Karate. <laughs> That's an absolute true thing. Um, <laughs> I know my Dolomite people. I do. <laughs> I really do. Um, but what I did like, I, I did like the fact uh, the 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 wing fight with the other chick and everything. I, I like the differences that were like that were subtle. You know, she had a katana. The other girl had you know the more traditional Chinese blade and everything. I, I like little tiny touches like that that like don't need to be there but are. Right, it's like actually having the proper weapon to the proper person makes a lot of sense, and kind of kind of made me smile. They're like, "Oh, well, at least they thought well enough to do that." Right, and uh, uh, do you have more for fights? Do you have more notes um, on the fights? I, I wrote. I don't remember what this. Oh, basically that Danny goes to Fight Club. <laughs> yeah. Yes, he does. <laughs> it's essentially yeah. another. There's yeah. at least like two or three different Fight Club type things in this entire series. <laughs> yes, there are, and and that last one looked an awful lot like uh, like a Bloodsport ripoff for sure. Nothing can be as good good slash bad as Bloodsport. People, come on. 
<laughs> that movie and is so greatly bad. It's just fantastic. It is the, the where when Van Damme gets blinded. Oh, I defy you to show one show me a, a greater look of anguish on someone. But here's face. the thing: he's replicated that through like every movie post that movie, where there's some point where he's just like, ah. <laughs> it's so good I, in every flick post post that movie. So good, awesome. So as and as bad as the fighting is in in this movie whenever Finn Jones is fighting there is something that is actually worse than the fighting scenes in this movie and that is the or in this TV show and that is the sex scene in episode 7 mm-hmm. there's the sex scene and it's the least sexy sex scene a show has ever had like <laughs> there two people have had like i I got to go uh, the prequel Star Wars movies for like less chemistry with two people on screen. <laughs> it, it's so bad that I, I, I literally thought to myself, are these two people, uh, is is he gay and she a lesbian? Yeah. Like, like I, I couldn't figure it out while you're watching it. It is so unhot. Yeah. It is so, it's so weird. And like I know they're trying to make it like sexy, where you, like the camera shows up under the sheets and everything. It's just weird. It's shot weird, but I know the reason why it was shot weird is because the chemistry is bad. It's it is an it is an awful awful sex scene in this movie. Yeah, TV show. Though to be frank, think about this whole se- like the whole Netflix thing. Have we ever seen superheroes get it on as much as we've seen in this whole Netflix series? No, not even close. Man, oh man, the, superheroes the, been getting the it all Luke Cage time. stuff, Luke Cage was getting laid left and right in that yeah. show. <laughs> it's like, yeah, but again, I think it's a it's a tough, I, I think you're right, the chemistry's not there, and you got a tough road to hoe going up against, you know, the crazy scene in Jessica Jones where they're breaking beds and stuff. I mean, oh, you know. Oh, so good. You got, a, you got a lot to live up to, son, and like this, and you know, I don't know, it just wasn't, you're right, it just wasn't there. You don't, there, it, it's it's wildly unsexy. It's it's just very bad. Yeah. I got another note here, which is so. Th- th- here's another example of very bad writing: is that you know, Gao's Gao's assassins they have the poison tip uh, weapons, and mm-hmm. uh, th- their her own assassins are killed with their weapons with the poison, which tells Danny that oh, Gao was responsible for killing my dad and the pilots on that plane, right. you know, umpteen years ago. <clears throat> but here is how you know the show is poorly written is that so Colleen gets gets you know nicked with one of those poison weapons mm-hmm. and the way you get out of it is that oh well you have the iron fist well guy who's never actually had the iron fist or any iron fist training goes well, you can use the Iron Fist to heal her because, you know, we are a very poorly written comic book property. So just use the Iron Fist to heal her. Yeah, I mean, I thought it was strange that, you, you know, like, A, he's got that power, but I can I can write that off. But B, you're correct in as much as it's like, how do you know this? And, like, they get through, like, showing us an old film reel you know, from way back in the forties or whatever, which is awesome. And I wish there was a lot more of that. Yeah. Now, did you see, uh, there was a, there was actually a color photograph, uh, of that scene, uh, floating around the internet. I have not seen it. It looked good. So you had like, I mean, it looked like you had the traditional like iron fist mask and everything, uh, surrounded by all the kind of dudes and stuff. It looked dope. And you're just like, where was that at, man? Yeah. Where's that one? Where was that at dog? That was good. We need more of that. And, and here's the thing. And I appreciate what they're kind of doing and stuff. And we've gotten more and more there, especially with like Daredevil. We went the entire season with Daredevil where he just went in the traditional kind of Frank Miller uh, black outfit and everything. But more and more as this show goes on, as this uh, entire Netflix series goes on, we're getting more and more into the comic book world. You know, we didn't wait until season two before he could start, you know, flipping around with the billy club and, you know, swinging and doing all that jazz. But by the time that we get there, we've all kind of warmed up to the idea of, hey, while this is very realistic, it's all very much in the comic book world as well. Mm -hmm. 
And I think they really should have kind of kept going with that. They do a little bit in this series, but I think they needed to do more. Embrace the comic bookiness of it all. Let them go with the mask and everything. Let them kind of get into it, man. And and there are several, several spots in here where it would be absolutely warranted for him to put on a mask and they never do it. And it's a shame that they don't sit there and capitalize on that and give people what they want. And I read a story that said, hey, it might be an even longer time until we get to see a mask. And I'm just like, this is not the way to do it. You're so deep into this, uh, you know, kind of universe right now. We're able to accept that and, you know, and with wide open arms, man, we're saying we get this real world that you're living in. But if you want to splash some comic book on us, don't feel afraid to do that. We're willing to accept it at this point. Or at least you're absolutely right. But, you know, at, or at least ease people into it if you're worried about it and have them wear like a, 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 a yellow and green Adidas track suit. And then and then, oh, you know what? Uh, I made you this costume. Here is your costume. Now, my big question is when w- with the picture you have in your head, Adam, mm-hmm. does he have the little yellow booties or does he have boots? He could just have, I mean, he, he could have like, you remember, you, you, you probably will because you're a shoe guy. You remember the, uh, the yellow Asics that the bride wore in, wore in uh, Kill Bill? Who, uh, who are you asking? Of course I remember yeah. them. They're awesome. Yeah, I, I think something like that. Yes, those would be awesome. So, totally agree. Yeah. Although they'd have to be Adidas because, you know, I yeah, mean. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> I had to, we have to make an exception, but something of that nature. I sure, think would, I think would be perfectly I think fine. that's a great idea. That's a great idea. But honestly, it, or, if it was like kind of kind of like that Bruce Lee game of death, but was more more green and with a with a splash and yellow, of yellow, and you're done. Yeah. But I think one of the problems with that is that I don't know how Finn Jones will look in that. I mean, you know, Ben be. Jones would probably look like the guy who played Spider Man in the 1977 Spider Man <laughs> movie, which is great. <laughs> Listen, I you know, it is what it is. But I th- we could have done well to just dip our toe in the water. That's all I'm saying. There's a co- I, Look, man, I totally agree with you. It's like your Marvel comics. You guys took big risks. You made you made a Guardians of the Galaxy movie that's like everyone's favorite movie of all time. Yeah. Like you could give him a mask. No one's. We got a talking tree and a, and a raccoon, people, and everyone's cool with it. Yeah, <laughs> you can give a you can give a cat a mask. It's a okay. But like even the slight, light little glimpses that you see in that in that uh, little forties reel and everything, and from what I've seen in the picture, you look at it and like it looks a little rough. It looks a little kind of real worldish, if you will. It works, dude. And it's just like just have the guts, man. Just have the guts to step up to the bar. You've done so well so far. Don't wuss out and really just, you know, take the foot off the gas. That's a that's a mistake. Agreed. I totally agree with you. Uh, let's see. What else do I got here? Now, I will say this. For for all the kind of things that this show kind of lacks and stuff, the uh, the music is great. Yes. The music in this is really, really good. Super kind of yep. synthy, almost kind of, uh, you know, what's just kind of like a... Atticus Ross and uh, oh, what's his face from Nine Inch uh, uh, Trent Reznor from Nine Inch Nails and stuff that kind of uh, thing that he's been doing for David Fincher for a couple flicks. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love it. I think it sounds really really good. And when that hits out on vinyl, I'll probably get it because I I, I dig it. Wow, you think this will come out on vinyl? Well, the others have. All of them. Mm-hmm. Oh wow, I thought that was just Luke Cage that did that. No, they they brought out just recently a uh, a, a Jessica Jones and a um, Daredevil as well. Wow, do you have those? I don't have those yet. I will get them eventually, though. But, all right. But they, all right. They, they put them all out on Mondo. But uh, oh, good I stuff. see. Okay. But luckily, 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 those don't uh, don't end up like the uh, the prints and stuff, because <laughs> the prints go in like two seconds. <laughs> the the records and stuff they keep on for a while. So that's that's the good part. But I, I would I would I would definitely purchase those because and Luke Cage soundtrack was fantastic as well. So I think that's something that they've really done well with all these things is have good music to go with it. And uh, I wonder I wonder what kind of style or maybe a mixture thereof that we'll get in the Defenders. So hmm. mm. uh, let's see, boy, they how many hallway fights do they attempt in this thing? There, you know, this is one of the things where after Defenders, if they're still doing hallway fights, 
I, they're allowed hallway fights and defenders because all four of these characters just fight in hallways all the time. Mm-hmm. But after defenders, we better not see a single other hallway fight ever again in Marvel uh, Netflix universe. Yes. We better not. To quote internet memes, it's time to stop. Yes, yes. It's it's now the blue light into the sky gag. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing. Let's let's get rid of this trope. You know, uh, defenders can use it because they've done it with all all the other shows, but it's time to end this. Yeah, and and this one this one was obviously it seemed like either well I I, I don't want to say they've run out of ideas because. It's just like all the fights in this, except for like, say for a couple of the wing fights, those are fine. But again, I think she's more of a martial artist to begin with. And I think that's why they can get away with it. Yes. Uh, the fights are just so lacking. It's just like, there's so many times where it's just like, okay, when's the light going to go out? Boom. There goes the light. Of course, because we want to keep this all in shadow because we don't know what <laughs> yes. the heck we're doing. Because our guy doesn't know karate. We're so, just trying to make it look... Uh, oh, yeah, it's all it's dark. Why do those, like, floodlights, when they're down and all the dudes are doing... Why do the floodlights keep panning around like it's, you know, Hollywood Boulevard or something? Why do, <laughs> because that's what, the, that's what the DP wants. Just point, just point at the people that are there. You know exactly where they are. Quit acting like you're... Where are, we, where are they at? Where are they at? They're <laughs> in the section where all the people are standing in a group, you idiot. You know, and here's here is one of my problems with this show, and I and and I kind of just figured it out actually while while talking it out with you, Adam, is that Iron Fist is by far the most powerful of all of these characters in the Netflix universe, right? So he should be a little scary, like just a little bit, where everyone's like, "Oh my God, that's that's Iron Fist!" Like we we better we better walk away from. Him. There is not an ounce of that in this character and that's not really that's not really finn jones's fault that's that's the writers and that's the directors and like hey this guy should be a little bit scary and they haven't done any of it Uh, i think you're right i think that really falls on the writers and stuff i i can't blame finn jones as much of this because like honestly when i picture what i hope to be his relationship with luke cage i kind of smile i think it might be good if if they play it right you know what i mean definitely could be but i think I think you're right in that matter. Like, so let's let's take for example, like one of the kind of final episodes there, where he goes and does the fist on the like upper floor there, and it just kind of sonic booms out the entire floor, right? Yeah. yeah. We needed something more like that to happen earlier. We needed a couple. I, I know that I know they're trying to you know sprinkle on. Oh, he's just learning his stuff. He's trying to really get in there and stuff. We needed more of that early to to get that. You're right. That kind of like ooh the iron fist because ain't nobody scared of this cat. Now, Just nobody he, cares. There's no menace to him at all. Because and they, of all four of these characters, he is the one with the with the legit power set that would make somebody go, "Oh man, we can't mess with that guy." Right. But let's walk away from him. But everybody walks up to him just like, I mean, I guess it kind of works to a degree, but they all walk up to him like, "Oh, you ain't Jack, man. I'm going to of course we're going to take you out." I, that shouldn't be. Or at least and and it, and it feels like they were trying to build to that, but they didn't build to it fast enough. Maybe we should have been there around, you know, halfway through to where people are like, Oh no, he's really got this stuff. He's a little bit more formative, uh, but I do like how they have old um, what's his face in there, uh, Davos, who's like I, I, who I'm sorry I can't keep thinking of the <laughs> of the guy in Doctor <laughs> Who. Uh, so, <laughs> um, but he's in there. I, I like him and how I, I like that relationship of he was kind of up to be Iron Fist too, but couldn't cut it. But really, probably should have been the guy that got it. I thought that was an interesting take, and I, I liked how they kind of put that in there. And to give us more of a reluctant hero. But again, it feels like they should have done that a lot earlier in there. Had that worn out. Much earlier. Had that worn out and everything. You know, him come back and early and just say like, hey, I followed you back. You've got to come back with me. We can't do this anymore. You know, I was going to be this guy, but I'm taking responsibility. you got to get your butt back there. And then by the halfway point, have him really kind of establish his power. And then have the other people be afraid then have somebody who's a little bit that gives him that challenge and then finish up like there. And then I guess you're right. Go along the ward Beecham style and just be like, Oh, I, I, you know, I really want to take this guy out, but how can I? Because, you know, he was a friend. He treated me like crap, but I got to be the bigger man. Yada, yada, yada. Yeah, exactly. That exactly. feels like that, that would have been better. a far more interesting story. Yeah. Call us up um, Netflix. <laughs> so, so let's get to, let's, let's get to the, 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 the end stinger here. Okay. Right. 
does that does did, did that uh, uh, did that get you? Were you like, wow, I can't believe it? I don't know if it was a wow, can't believe it. I was just like, it, I, f- I felt like it was a good way. I felt like the whole, I felt like it ended well, more or less. With again, without having to really tease into what we would get with the defenders, it 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 felt well enough. For, see, for me, the only time we'd seen, you know, because. I, I don't know why you wouldn't know this if you're listening to this, but yes, Kunlun is is gone from where it's yeah. supposed to be, and all we've seen of it, the the only moments we've seen of Kunlun is when he's being beaten. Danny Rand is being beaten throughout the entire 13 episodes of this show by mm-hmm. those by those monks to toughen him up and make him stronger. So we have no connection to Kunlun. Doesn't it? Doesn't it? Doesn't hit. At all, like at all, at all. But it's, the, the, and again, it's the, not the closest surprising. we got to it was when Gao was saying how great it is. Mm-hmm. That's it. But I also, I did, I did, I will say this because we didn't really touch on her that much. But I did like Gao throughout this entire thing, and I think that's one of the things that kind of like made these last like five, six episodes better uh, than the first. Was that is that it had a lot of uh, a lot of twists and turns, had a lot of who do you trust kind of thing, you know. Right. And I thought that was really good to be like, oh, guess what? Wing, she's part of, she's part of the hand. But no, she's part of, of the good hand. This is the bad hand. And it's like, who do you trust? And and again, I feel like at the end of the day, it's, it still feels like this could have been eight episodes and been really, really great. Agreed. Totally agree. You know, I think that they have to stop going on the 13th episode. Or just write better stuff. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, if you're going to do sure, 13, sure, by God, fill that 13. If you, if you have 13. eight episodes worth of material, don't try to bring it out to 13. That's it's ridiculous. Exactly. So that's my point. If you got 13, fill those 13 properly. But if you don't have a full 13 to fill, go eight. Nobody's going to be like, oh, crap, dude. They gave us eight great episodes. I wish they would have gave it, given us four more mediocre ones. No one has ever said that. Doesn't exist. Does not exist. But I, I thought that was great. I, I liked I liked Cal. I thought she, she became like more of a kind of fleshed out character for this. And I love how she does it. She's not afraid of anything. She just sits in her little hotel room there and just goes, eh, what are you what are you gonna do? I love the sodium pentothal th- uh, scene and everything where it's just like, you think that I didn't just do that for your own little like uh, you know entertainment? Of course I did. Yeah. And, and and to and we learned that she was she's been alive since at least the 1700s. Awesome, pretty great. Uh, it was, yeah, let, so let's get to this part. Uh, what are your favorite things about Iron Fist? Because I, I feel like I've been just slamming it the entire time. I will tell you first because I'm kind of springing this on you. What my favorite okay. things about the show are? Uh, Rosario Dawson is yet again. A, a a gleaming beacon uh, in the Netflix universe. She's a she magnificent so glue great. that holds it all together. Yes, she is. She is amazing. Uh, she's been great on and on every single one of these episodes. She's been terrific. Uh, I like her. I like Gao. That's what made me think of this mm-hmm. question: is that Gao is great. She's a great bad guy, and I really like Ward Meacham. I really really like that character. And they and they cut him off at the knees by making his dad the big bad. They mm-hmm. should never have done that. Well, they always got season two to rewrite their stuff. Uh, I, I think I'd agree with those statements. I think those. I mean, those are really good. It it's it's tough because it feels like, like we said, there's it feels like there's there's a good show in here. It feels like they didn't have enough of the proper prep time and everything to go with this. It feels like they kind of have done with all, all of this stuff once we got past, you know. Uh, once we got into Jessica Jones really going into Luke Cage, it feels like all of a sudden they were going in high speed and they were like, we can't stop this train. It's going. Yeah. It's going and there's nothing we can do about it. Get on board and get on board now and not have to worry about really kind of just crafting the best thing that you possibly can. Story-wise, uh, fight-wise and everything and really get people time because they put off casting, uh, you know, the casting of Iron Fist for way too long. They kept trying to find the right person to do it, and while I think Finn Jones is fine, you can't, you can't put a guy who's supposed to be a martial arts a, uh, master 
on the screen without actually having that kind of skill. And if he's not going to have that kind of skill, for the love of all that's holy, put a mask on his face and put another cat in there. Agreed. It's such an easy fix, dude. And and uh, the uh, half the other time, it's all in black, so it's just like, uh, again, put in a better stunt dude. And if and if and if you did, and like that's what you got out of it, you need more. You either a need more time or b fire your people. But here's the thing, man. I've done the deep dive on this. It's pretty much all the same people, and that's what kind of kills me. That just tells me they didn't have time. When you have the same stunt people and everything, and the same fight people from all this stuff, it tells me they just didn't have enough time to do anything. And that's to me, that's where the real crime of all this is, is that it feels like they just didn't take their time enough. And if they started on like a season two or whatever, however they're going to do this, do that now. Let him get, let him get, let let him get his reps in. Let him get the fights down right and choreograph that out correctly, and just figure out what you want to do because you've done it so well before. Stop, stop running, slow down. Or make, or make Iron Fist a new guy because you know that it's a power set. It's not a person. True. You could do that too. That would make it better for I, sure. I think they. I think they're in for a penny and for a pound at this point. But that's. I think so too. Know, sadly, I don't think that'll go any other direction. All right. Now, before we get to our final reviews here and everything, we have to ask ourselves the important question. How does this TV series relate back to our good friend, Sylvester Stallone? Ah, thanks, Adam. I have a prepared statement. Oh. I don't usually like to turn the Stallone connection into a monument of my ego, (laughs) by which I mean that's what I always do, and this week will be absolutely no exception. If you, dear listener, knew the sheer amount of research I had to do... To bring you this week's Stallone connection, you would shake your head in disbelief and quietly think to yourself, why, Sean? Why do you do this? <laughs> my answer is this. Nothing is more important to me than your entertainment. Nothing. My children, my girlfriend who's way too good for me, my 20-year career in film and television, my tenuous relationship with the people who manage Sylvester Stallone's career. Nothing. <laughs> Your entertainment needs are like a really cute baby to me. And that baby needs nurturing and love and occasionally have a thinly veiled dirty joke spoken to him or her. (laughs) With this huge preamble, I'm glad to present to you stuntman Hans Marrero. Hans Marrero, after no less than four hours of searching for someone. (laughs) Seriously, four hours When Hans Marrero showed up, the sense of relief I experienced I've only found one other time. When my friend Andy Cox and I went to Florida as kids to see who could go the longest without pooping. (laughs) In the middle of the fourth day, I couldn't hold it in any longer, and Andy came out the victor. (laughs) At least that's the way I remember it. My memory has turned into an unreliable narrator, to be honest with you. Anyway... Hans Marrero is a stuntman that's been working since 2010 when he applied his services to the underrated TV show Terriers, where he performed stunts and played the role of a legal number two. He would move on to other projects like G.I. Joe Retaliation, Tom Hardy's Warrior, and Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Mm. And two of those three movies are awesome. (laughs) Some of you may be asking yourselves, is... Is Hans Marrero any good at his job as a stuntman? Well, I'm glad you asked, imaginary audience member, because Dude Bro has 16 projects coming up. 16! Jeez. I work all the time, and I only have three projects coming up. He also works on a lot of Marvel projects, working on Netflix Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Captain America Civil War, and Luke Cage. All projects that are vastly superior to Iron Fist. (laughs) And then two years ago, Hans Marrero got the call, the call we've all waited for, the call to work on a movie called Creed, starring the movie star I will be forever linked to, and I'm okay with that, (laughs) Sylvester Stallone. Now, there's some interesting facts about Creed that I need to bring up here, like the fact that Stallone was 69 when they shot Creed, which is the same age Burgess Meredith was when they shot the original Rocky. (laughs) 
Stallone had to break up an actual fight between two other boxers on set. And star Michael B. Jordan gained 24 pounds of muscle by working out two or three times a day, six days a week, adhered to a strict diet for almost a year, and since he didn't have a body double, he had to learn how to box in preparation for his role. Now, see, that's what Iron Fist is missing. <laughs> this is true. And remember earlier when I said that Hans Marrero has 16 projects coming up? One of those projects is Escape Plan 2, starring Sylvester Stallone. So there you have it, nice nurse. This week's Stallone Connection. Now let's review the second half of Iron Fist so I can go back to hanging out in the mountains and not worrying why Iron Fist isn't so very good. <laughs> All right, so let's get down to it here on Hero Movie Podcast. We have our patented Robin rating system. If you're not sure how that works, head on down to Facebook.com slash Hero Movie Podcast, and it's right there on the front page, man, and they give you the whole layout of how everything works, and while you're there, why not throw us a like? We're almost up to 2,000 likes over there, so uh, make that happen, people. Come on, give, uh, give Adam 2,000 likes. He I checks it every day. I want to be, I want to be liked. <laughs> it's sad, but true. All right, so I will start here uh, because I think mine's going to be probably a little bit nicer. Sure. Um, I honestly, I kept kind of going back and forth. Like I, I wasn't in love with this. Like I, like I love the other things, even with uh, Luke Cage in the second half, where a lot of people tended tended to uh, drop off. I was, I was still on. I was still on with that craziness there. Uh, this, like I said, it, it had me on a roller coaster. There were times I was up. There were times where I'm like, okay, let's move on. And I've said it once. I've said it five times at least. This should be an eight-episode series, not a 13. That being said, there's enough in here that's okay despite all of its shortcomings. And Lord knows there's a lot. For me, this is just a very tentative Damian Wayne. It's right there in the middle. It, it's serviceable, but is just really not up to par when you compare the other, you know, you know, f three seasons that are out there from everything else. Four seasons, technically, I guess. Uh, but it's just not the same, man. And it feels like, you know, they just could have put, put it in the oven for a little while longer and maybe gotten something worth out of it instead of giving us something that just feels like it's a little undercooked. What do you got? Those are all good points. Uh, I'm giving this show is stephanie brown uh you know it's not the worst thing we've ever seen but it's also not very good yeah. you know it, it's like i said the at the first half of this series it it's it's fine it's okay it's not great it is a little embarrassing it is not something that i would show people where i go oh uh you want to get into you want to get into comic book movie properties let me show you this. This is definitely not something I would ever show someone. So it yeah. is a Stephanie Brown for me. I can't say that I blame you there. It's, like I said, mine was just tentative, so it's it's, it's just barely there. Uh, but, you know, we got the defenders to look forward to. Maybe he integrates into a team better. Who's to say? Maybe it's one of those things. And, you know, but we got more stuff coming, man. They're, they've already, uh, I don't know if they've started officially shooting yet, but they're just, if, if not, they're just about to start shooting uh, the next season of Daredevil and and uh, Jessica Jones season two's already got a green light, so they're about to start rolling on that. Not too awful long. So and I'm uh, excited to see those things. The the Netflix world ain't stopping, kids. So be that as it may. All right. So next week, Bruce Leslie will be back. Do not worry. Uh, mm -hmm. But we are, and he may he may have wanted to have uh, missed next week, but he's going to be back for next week because we're going to be talking about Legion. That's right. Uh, speaking of a show that went eight episodes, see Netflix, it can be done. Mm -hmm. uh, Legion on FX that went eight episodes we reviewed the first two episodes a couple weeks back if you want to check the archives for that but we're going to round out se season one here tell people what we thought and everything and get on down to it and uh, the week after that of course will be our uh, Patreon uh, voting stuff coming in there as well so looking good for that also in the meantime Sean where can we find more of your work on the internet this week sir why don't you look me up on the Twitter that's here a movie Sean at or at Hero Movie Sean. 
And of course, Bruce Leslie, why don't you follow him on the Chubby Wizards there on the uh, Heroes and Villains podcast and get that book there, uh, Dragon in the Needles, available on iTunes. Uh, well, don't do it on the iTunes. You'll pay too much over there. Do it on Audible if you want to do the audio book or it's on Amazon proper there if you're a regular book reading type of person. So, you know, head that up, people. And of course, my other show, uh, hopefully the film find and Nerd Talk Now will be back. I've started a new job, so I had to have a, it's been a weird kind of transition thing. I may be retooling Nerd Talk now a little bit, but I think it might be more enjoyable and maybe a little bit more bite-sized and grabbable for everybody else as well. So keep on the lookout for that and all that kind of good jazz. And uh, that is it, everybody. So thank you guys so much for uh, joining us this week yet again. Uh, for the absent Bruce Leslie, Sean Keenan, I'm Adam Portress. Stay super, everybody. Bye, Marty and Evie.